exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcast, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. Three minutes after 8 o'clock, Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO 105.5 FM and Jessup World Famous Butch and Bob Show for this Friday morning, fabulous Friday morning, football Friday, right, Bob? Hopefully. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. <They're> coming. <laughs> All so those rumors. Is, is Ware County actually going to come up Highway 84? Are yep. they coming? The whole town's coming. The whole town of uh, Waycross and, and the county of Ware is coming this It'll way. It'll be a packed house on that side, I promise you. Okay. I got you. Yeah. I, I, I just didn't know. We got a very special guest in this morning. Then we got the sheriff, John Carter. He's been a special guest for a long time. I mean, a yeah, long time. So before the end of the year, well, I don't always consider myself them. special. I've been here enough now. I ought to be part of the team. You're just part yeah. of the team, huh? <laughs> we're, just, we're just glad you're here. Like I said, it's still business as usual till the end of January, right? You're still. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I actually, uh, uh, some people don't realize that. They thought, you know, that uh, that took, took office immediately. But, you know, and he knows that. But he's he's at Sheriff Lake School. I have been in contact with him. And here I are working toward making this transition as, as easy as possible. And, and that's my goal. And. Uh, looking at it, as we used to say when I was overseas, I got 41 days and a wake up, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, we had him in after he won the election. He said the same thing. You reached out to him, and y'all have discussed, you know, the operation, and he, he said that you're trying to make it as smooth as possible, so that's a good thing. Well, and uh, as I start, you know, going through and, and clean out, because I got, let's face it, I got... Not just 16 years. I was chief deputy 13 years. I still got some of that uh, uh, stuff that I'm trying to clean out files that really, you know, you, you get uh, out of sight, out of mind type thing. They've, they've been there years, but uh, they really serve no purpose. But anything that's going to be beneficial to him, I'm keeping. I told him that. Uh, I'm making uh, notes of things I know that he's going to have to do. That You know, you don't think of all these things, but as I get to going through uh, different parts of the filing cabinet said, so, hey, he's going to have to do this. So I'm, I'm writing it down, and uh, mm -hmm. he and I will be meeting uh, as, as much as we can, right? You know, a lot of people don't know he's got four weeks. He has to go to a sheriff elect school and try and squeeze that in between now and, and the end of the year. But right. uh, even after the year, if, he, if he's got, uh, you know, something that uh, uh, he needs to know or I need to do, I'll still be available. I'll What's his uh, official swear-in date for... Chuck I Mosley. don't know when the uh, the probate judge will, will do that. Okay, is it like the first couple of weeks of January, or no? They do that usually in December before because Beforehand. so he has to begin on January. Well, 1st. one of the things he'll have to do is, is swear in all his personnel okay. before January first. Okay, I see that before midnight on December thirty first. So it's way, it's way before the, the 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 swearing of the new president, right? Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, he's got the you know the, these people have to have you know they have to be sworn before they. Uh, start working on January 1st. So well, that's going to be a, a change for Wayne County. We've got a new sheriff coming in, and we've got a new district attorney, so there's going to be a lot of changes made when it comes to um, basically law enforcement here in Wayne County. And to be honest with you, both of them going to be drinking out of a fire hose to start off with because it's a lot to do. And there's a lot backed up because of COVID-19. So not only do you get the ground with all kinds of these new personnel, uh, both from the prosecuting and from the arresting part of it, then you've got so many cases backed up for this past year. Well, we just swore in our first grand jury in a year uh, last Monday, I believe it was. Uh, so those, uh, a lot of the trial cases will start in January. So the district attorney's got a job preparing those. Uh, we've got uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 drug cases that will be coming up. And uh, a great portion of those are RICO cases that really need to go before the grand jury and, and mm. get some of these uh major dealers that we're looking at off the street. Okay. Bob. Like I said, I was, I was just going to piggyback off that. Like I said, there's a lot that hasn't been able to be done because of the COVID thing, but what has been done? Have there any cases at all? I mean, is there, there's still some kind of court going on, right? There's just no trial. They're, they're doing pleas, and then they'll do uh, probation revocations. Those are probationers are, are, are killing me at the jail. I mean, you know, it's even medically, uh, for example, uh, just in the last month, I mean, it's really been uh, way above average. I've been to the emergency room 30 times. 30 uh, times? Yep, average, with inmates. Uh, average wow. average visit at emergency rooms is about four to six hours. 
Uh, and what is, is that have as a common theme with all these or anything at all? Or is it yeah, most of them been using drugs all their life, and they're in their early forties and they're having major problems. Oh, I but, see. Uh, okay. Um, you know, that's the the general thing, and then and, and, uh, probation. Uh, you know, the ones that that uh, I can get out, the judges uh, will help us. Uh, the district attorney's office has been gracious enough to, to help us get uh, what we could out. You, but you can't get them all out. But anyway, we got to, uh, I've had, let's see, I still got one in the hospital of five, which means we got to be there 24 hours a day. And our, you know, we're understaffed right now. I mean, yeah, we got, people realize that when you got somebody in the emergency room in the hospital, you got to have a deputy there with them. Well, I've got four. Four positions open, I contest. The county says three, four. We're still working on that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I say four. They say three. It's just but numbers. Uh, anyhow, say tomato, I say tomorrow. But yeah, anyhow, three, I got three out that have had surgery. And things, so I'm basically seven short and trying to do this 24-hour day thing. It's just, it's, uh, uh, we, we have had uh, a lot of adverse conditions to work under with COVID and, and all the other things. And, you know, knock on wood, that, uh, I, our men and women, uh, uh I can't say uh, enough about them. They've stepped up, uh, but they're tired. I mean, they, they, you know, they say all the overtime, hey, they don't like working it all the time either. They like to be with their families and right. holidays coming up. It's it's going to be a tough time, but uh, we, we, you know, we're lucky enough to have some candidates that have applied with us that are already certified that I want to send to school that we can uh, pretty okay. much uh, start immediately. They just have to learn the county a little bit, but we, you know, we, we're, we're moving forward, but... Uh, uh, all I can say is, you know, I'm so proud of my folks, especially, you know, the jail. You know, right now, knock on wood, we've been able to keep COVID out of that jail by the, the measures that we have done. And those things I'm proud of. But, uh, you know, it reminds me of a, a quote by Winston Churchill when he said when uh, Britain was being attacked by the German Air Force. And he said, uh, never have been so many been indebted by to so few. Right. And that's the way I feel. Because we, we, there's a few of us, but we have to cover this entire county still. And it covered domestics and child molestations and drugs and all the other things we have to deal with. You know, I'm sitting here looking at your shirt. What do you do with this shirt right here come January 1st, John? It says Sheriff John Carter. has got the Sheriff logo on there. Do you, you, you hang it up in the closet just for souvenirs? Well, I got a burn barrel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know if you just put it to the side, you know. And when no, you I'm not going to need it again. Yeah, I remember when I was sheriff. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going to need it again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it just pass not, it down to the family. Well, you know? It's not like my military uniform. It's you know nicely packaged up. Right. You know, when I got out, of course it was 33 in the waist and a 15 and a half shirt. So. I can't wear it anyway. I remember those days when I was 33 in the waist. But, you know, those are uh, things, you, you know, I'm just uh, trying to make it as easy as I can for the incoming administration. Uh, uh, most of the folks, and I've talked to Chuck, I've hired some folks, but I talked to him and let, let him know what I'm doing, and, and uh, uh, he's okay with it, and I told him what we had. And, you know, of course, the other thing is uh, our policy not the counties, the sheriff's office policy says, you know, you, you're on probation for a year. So, you know, he, he still got that option when he comes in because they'll still be on probation. But okay. uh, I don't it's think, I don't think he's going to have any problems with them. They look, they look real good because we do a very, very thorough background check. All right. Wayne County Sheriff John Carter, a special guest this morning here on the world famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO 105.5 FM and Jessup. Bob? So if you started your travel itinerary, what's John Carter going to do after January 1? Well, Marsha says that I'm going to be doing a lot of things around honey the dudes. house. Uh, honey you may be doing them honey do. But, and I told her, I said, honey, I says, I'll do anything you can get me to do. <laughs> 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 but no, we got, we got a lot of things we want to do that we haven't been able to do. I got, you know, some, uh, my shop and barn and things that I need to do some, uh, repairs on and, and, uh, redesign and those things that you just don't have time. Actually, you know, I know they they think my office, you know, I'm just sitting at a desk all day, and a lot of times I am, but I'm going to tell you what, you mentally tax and you get home, and sometimes you don't want to do anything, and now with I the time mean, change, you, it's dark when I get home. So. Yeah. Or what do you think uh, you'll miss about the job? <laughs> I've thought about that. I'm going to miss the people. And, I, I, you know, the, the people that I work with, and they'll tell you, I don't say they work for me, they work with me. Uh, and that's just been my philosophy all along. Uh, 
I either get the credit or the blame, but yeah, the <laughs> they were with me. I, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it, it stops with me, and, I, and I'll, I'll take, you know, full responsibility for uh, uh, what what happens in that office. Uh, and we got problems sometimes, and sometimes you don't. You're going to have that anywhere you go. Right. Uh, but the people that I've met statewide, uh, you know, it's starting with the governor if you want to. He and, he and I have a great relationship when he started uh, – as a Secretary of State, we developed that relationship, and then when he ran for governor, there was about three sheriffs down here that, that supported him uh, from day one, and that was uh, Jim Proctor in Camden and Neil Jump in Glenn and myself uh, down in South Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the others were with uh, Casey Cagle, but, uh, and I didn't have anything against Casey. Casey's a good guy, but I just felt like Brian was the best man for the job. Okay. Uh, but other, you know, senators that we met, I mean, not just ours. I mean, you know, I know uh, I had Mark Williams for a while, then I had uh, uh, Chad Nimmer, and I got Stephen Meeks, and they've all been great. They are good people. They do a good job. Uh, Bill Workheiser come on, came on board. Uh, He's done a good job. Blake Tillery uh, followed uh, uh, Tommy okay. Williams. Oh, that's Tommy yeah. Williams. Yeah. Too many Williams is around. That's what a lot of folks say when they retire um, is the fact that they miss the people. You know, I was, I was talking to a businessman the other day who retired uh, uh, several months ago, almost a year ago. And he was, you know, he owned and operated a business here in mm -hmm. town, and then he sold it and worked for a while, and, and now he's just completely retired. And he says what he misses is seeing the people, the customers, uh, not only the, the workers that work with him, but not near as big a staff as you do at the insurance department, but just the people coming in, the, the customers, and, and, the, and, the, and that type of relationship. Because when you're at home all day long, you know, unless you're a member of a group, well, a church or a group or something out there, your your sphere of uh, influence that you're involved with the people you're around is very limited versus like in your situation with the sheriff's department where you got all the staff that works with you and then you got all the people that you deal with with their situations every day well and you know you deal with uh, such as the sheriff's association i've you know served on almost every committee you can serve on there uh, i was appointed in 2015 to the uh Sheriff's Retirement Board by Governor Deal and reappointed by Governor Kemp. I was actually served as a chairman of that the past year, uh, and I uh, voluntarily stepped down and let another sheriff that was on there have it, and I just, I'm just i just on the board, and I'll be on that board to December, and then uh, uh, the governor will have to uh, appoint somebody else. But those committees and things I've been on throughout, uh, the, and I was served as the president of Georgia Sheriff Youth Homes. Now, that was special to my heart. Now, that'll mm -hmm. tug at your heartstrings there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I love all the youth homes. I still support them, and I will continue to support them. Somebody just texted in and said, uh, thank you, Sheriff Carter, for your service. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we've done the, the best we could, and I've enjoyed my service this county. Uh, not just my time as sheriff and chief, but my entire career, I started with the sheriff's office. I've never worked anywhere else. Okay. Bob? I'm just glad you came in. Like I said, it's always good to see you. I said you've been a regular, so we just would appreciate it. But like I said, it is business up until the end of the year, a lot going on. So What is going on right coming. now that people need to be aware of? Well, we've got holidays coming up. You know, of course, that's the time of year where, where tragedy strikes a lot of times on the highways. Uh, I'm encouraging folks, along with the governor's office, highway safety to, you know, uh, uh, don't text and drive the usual things. Don't drive impaired. Uh, the things that we tell you every time that uh, generally causes a lot of these fatalities. Uh, be careful with your, you know, uh, Christmas presents, all the things that we normally put out there. Yeah. Thanksgiving, I want to wish everybody a, a, a you know, a Thanksgiving. We're, uh, we're, we'll be working so you can have peace at your time. So that's what we're, we're out there trying to protect you so your family can enjoy Thanksgiving. You know, it sounds simple, but, you know, you say it all the time, every time this year, lock your vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's so many, you know, people who just don't lock their cars. Christmas shopping downtown and they come out and all of a sudden they're, presents are gone because they didn't lock their vehicle well it, and it, it doesn't just have to be downtown it in their yards it don't and we you know we go through neighborhood watch that's one thing we tell we just took out 27 warrants for entering autos Jeez. and every one of them are unlocked Unlock wow uh, Amazing. you know and those are almost every one of them anyway I remember the days uh, you could unlock, keep your vehicle unlocked, and leave your keys in it, but not anymore. But I, you that, know, that and I've, I've said years. this, I've said this before, Butch. I, I, uh, I interviewed a guy. I said, you know, 
He says, he said, well, he says, I like that a lot once. He said, but that being said, if I see a laptop or I see something visible that's real viable, I'll break a window. Yeah. He said, but I don't like to break windows. It makes noise. Yeah. Keep that's things it. hidden where people can't see it and lock your uh, vehicle in that cut stage. The, the, those thieves want the easier targets if they can find them. Uh, somebody just text in. I want you to listen to all this, Sheriff, so I don't want you to get offended uh, the first right. part of it, okay? Uh, all right. <laughs> it says, uh, this is a text that just came in at 912-427-3711. It says, Sheriff Carter may not be the best there is, but he's the best we ever saw. <laughs> well, I don't know if I agree with that or not. I don't know if I'm the best or best I ever saw, but, uh, you know, it's not because lack of effort. I haven't tried to to do things and, and, and keep our county as safe as I could possibly make it. Now, someone just texted in and says, we thank John Carter for many years of service from Sandra and Ed Exley. I know Ed and Sandra, and I appreciate that. Thank y'all. Okay. So just getting a lot of thank yous there as uh, Sheriff Carter will be wrapping up his uh, tenure as Sheriff of Wayne County in just a few weeks and heading off into the sunset and retirement doing those honeydews. I'd say 41 and a wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't get that military mind out because you know, uh, well, that was a long time ago, Sean. <laughs> yeah, that was two lifetimes ago. It seemed like it was... Over 50 years now, but yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's still stuck with me. still stuck with you after all these years. You wow. get your golf clubs cleaned up. <laughs> well, uh, when it doesn't interfere with my fishing, I might play a little golf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And uh, so uh, it's good to see that you and Chuck are working together for a smooth transition uh, from uh, from you to his administration, which began first in January. And uh, I'm sure that's going to be... Um, uh, kind of a, a emotional day for you on your last day up there, you know, stepping away from the, the position, but mainly just stepping away from the people there and, and having to interact with them, being able to interact with them every day. Well, we, we haven't, you know, we didn't do anything uh, during the election. Uh, after the runoff, uh, we met before he actually was the sheriff. He was still the, you know, he was a Republican uh, candidate at that time. But, uh, uh, and we, we've talked since then, like I say, we, we're going to continue to, uh, meet as, as you know time permits and then try to get all this uh, stuff ironed out that he'll have to do i mean there's things checking accounts there's a lot of things that's got to be done uh yeah and he and i are discussing that and like i said i'm making a list of things that i know he'll have to do that he may not have thought of either yeah at least it's a smoother transition than we'll have in washington dc in january <laughs> <laughs> well, i ain't going there but <laughs> <laughs> wait it just ain't no obviously it'll be a smoother transition if that transition happens in January, but it's just good to see because Wayne County, the Wayne Countyans benefit when our elected and appointed officials get along and work together. Well, you know, this could be my last uh, appearance on the Butch and Bob show, uh, but I can tell you after January 1, I may be a lot more opinionated. <laughs> And I know my diplomatic. wife will. Yeah, you got to be a little more diplomatic when you're on Lake Official, right? Uh, I've had to put a choke collar on her. She's going to she, she gonna go wild now. All right. Uh, here's a text that just came in. Uh, it says, uh, thank you, John, for your years of service to Wayne County and for many years of friendship, Chairman Herschel Hires. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate that, Herschel. Okay. You can always come back. It you know, doesn't have to be your last appearance. Especially, well, I thought maybe especially we, if you're going to be more opinionated. Maybe fun. we can get three. <laughs> we can call it the Bush, Bob, and John show, and uh, I'll, I'll get to, you know, throw in a thing or two. Throw in a thing or two. Really I might have to go take, a, you know, one of them crash courses on the Internet on journalism. <laughs> <laughs> it says, another text that came in, we salute you, Sheriff Carter. Thank you for all you do. So another text that just came in. Well, I appreciate uh, the the people of Wayne County. I always have. Uh, I love them. We haven't always agreed and, and probably won't ever. But, you know, I've tried to treat everybody uh, as best I could, as, as equally as I can. And that's sometimes not possible, but you do the best you can. Yeah. But I certainly appreci appreciate, uh, Marcia and I, I appreciate the people of Wayne County allowing me to serve all this time. Okay. Bob, anything else for our sheriff this morning? No, it's just always good to see you. Like I said, I just wanted you to come on in before your term ended. But thank you again for all the times you've been on the show. I mean, you've been sheriff for quite some time, and we've had you regularly all that time. And like I said, there's a lot going on. People want to know what's going on with their law enforcement agencies. So there's a lot a lot of, that people don't understand. I said it's not just law, you know, the funeral that you all do every time. I mean, people still come in how that's handled by law enforcement. You know, it's something that isn't done in a lot of places, but here in Wayne County, the law enforcement's always there. When there's a funeral, 
Uh, we just had the elections. Uh, Tammy talked about how I didn't realize this. They talked about it. The night before the election, you have to have a law enforcement officer at every precinct to protect yeah, those machines. Yeah, 24 hours right. a day. I, mean, you I didn't realize that until she mentioned that. A lot of people don't know that. So there's a lot that law enforcement does besides just enforcing laws. And, but well, it, it you is know, in, in the sheriff's case, uh, law enforcement is about a third of what we do, actually, because we got courts, we got jail, we got a lot of responsibilities. And I've said it many times, the, the sheriff is the only CEO in the entire criminal justice system that's got three main areas of responsibility. Well, you know, the drugs always comes the big issue. You know, you've been sheriff for a long time. You know, why do you, you know, we talked about this before. Why is meth such a big issue just because it's cheap to do? I mean, you see that every time we get these drug reports, it's, Meth, meth, meth. Well, meth is cheaper. You know, we went through the crack, cane, crack cocaine era in the in the 80s, and then, you know, we started getting into meth uh, uh, and uh, prescription medicine, especially when they came out with Oxycontin, especially 80 milligram Oxycontin, you know. But we, we, we have to deal some with all of it, and, you know, you're only good as your resources, and you're not going to, you know, my, my uh, analogy is this, or, or you know, like I, I, I talk, talked to about it before, if the federal government can't keep him coming in this country, there's no sheriff or nobody in Georgia going to be able to keep him coming in their county. And this, that's just a fact. Uh, but we're going to fight it as much as we can. And, and you know, but you only got uh, so much, so many dollars and so much effort. That's the reason I joined the task force up there to try to get uh, uh, more help. Uh, as cheaply as, as we could afford it. It cost me to have to put a man in there. That's all it cost me. All right, we've got some more texts that have come in. It says, thank Sheriff John Carter for what you've done for our community. Hope you enjoy your retirement. And um, got a couple so more. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, thanks, John, from Lewis. I guess you know who Lewis is. Well, I don't know. I know a lot of Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, just from all the Lewis's in. And uh, it says, um, it says here, another text that have come, has come in says, from the Uniform Patrol Division, thanks for being a great leader. That's all caps here. Great leader, Captain Popple. Well, thank you, Captain. Uh, coming from you, that's because he's been, he's been in law enforcement a little bit longer than I have. I've been in the sheriff's office longer than he has. But he's been a great, uh, great ally to us. Uh, he's been uh, uh, one of my, one of my partners, one of my command staff people that I can depend on. Another text that has just come in says, "Best boss I have ever had, best friend always, Alma and the girls in the front office." <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do it without them. She actually runs the office. She won't tell you that. But she, <laughs> <laughs> she lets me know what I need to do. <laughs> And say, all right, boss, you got to do this, this, and this. And you say, yes, ma'am. <laughs> all right, we appreciate these folks texting in these, um, these comments this morning for sure for John Carter um, uh, here on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show. Anything else, Bob, for our guest this morning? I said, you're welcome back in time. Though. Enjoy your retirement. And I said, well, you never know. I may get involved in something that requires me to come on the radio again. Uh, or if you ask me, I can come discuss uh, anything you want to that, that I got any knowledge about. All right. Well, <laughs> we'd love curious. to have you back on you again. Have you any interest in running for any other offices? No, uh, actually, no. <laughs> School board? Actually, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I, mean, I was once a Lord, politician. I was a politician. My wife's cringing at the house about you even mentioning it. I might have <laughs> done political office. No, 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 no. We don't want to run for anything else is what she's she, saying. Huh? Uh, she made it uh, perfectly clear that she was tired of having to do PC stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to become opinionated too? Woo! She is, trust me. <laughs> All right, Sheriff John Carter here this morning. And uh, we and here from Big Dog Country Radio, Bob and I and all the staff here want to thank you for the great pro cooperation we've had with you and your department uh, for the past many, many years and, and keeping us informed about what's going on with the Sheriff's Department so we can keep the thousands of folks here in Wayne County informed. Uh, about what's going on with the sheriff's department when it comes to uh, uh, things they need to look out for, or, uh, notices, uh, arrest notices, anything that's come up, you've let us know, and we've been able to pass it along to our listeners, and we want to thank you for that, John. Well, I thank uh, thank uh, y'all for you know having me on these shows and allowing me to uh, to try to let the people know what's going on in our county when we could. Uh, you know, Bob's done a good job because by I try to get him as much information as I can. 
uh, that I can release. Sometimes you can't release everything at one time. But anyway, y'all have been great. Uh, uh, Jonathan has been great to work with and everybody else out here, and I, I do appreciate that. But I appreciate the people of Wayne County, and I appreciate them. Like I say, they gave me the opportunity, and they supported me all those years. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm just tickled, tickled to death that I had the opportunity to serve the citizens of Wayne County. All right. Another text that came in says, Thank you, John Carter, for a job very well done. Thank you. I thank you. I thank everybody. I know everybody can't text in, but I, I appreciate them. Uh, I don't know what my wife's going to have to say to me when I get home because I probably said something that offended her. But <laughs> well, just in case you need to uh, to inform her what was said on the show, the the show is of course videoed and uh, and in audio. And well, it's, don't tell uh, her that it's it's on video right now. And then of course in a little while, John will post that to our website at bigdogcountry.com, bigdogcountry.com, and folks can just go down to the B and B show, go to archive shows. In today's show, will not be on there. At not only in audio, but also video. So it'll be on there for the next several weeks if folks want to watch it and listen to it. Well, thank you. Again, thank you all. All right. John, thank you. And I hope we can see you soon. All right. All right. <laughs> Take care. All right. The world-famous Butch and Bob Show here on Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO 105.5 FM and Jessup, brought to you by Local Boys Construction, also brought to you by First Southern Bank, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, and by Murphy Builder Supply, all here in Jessup. The world-famous Butch and Bob Show.